Okay, my outstanding friends, another shocker du jour. This is crazy. Have you ever heard of something called the blood-brain barrier? If you haven't, what it is is a very tight restriction between the blood that flows through your body with all kinds of things in it and the stuff that's in your brain, which is not supposed to have all kinds of things in it. It's supposed to have only specific chemistry. And as far as I know, nobody knows how enzymes and so forth can get in to the blood-brain barrier because they're very complex molecules. And as I'm going to read you what it says, and normally they can't get in, so they really don't know how to deal with this blood-brain barrier, specifically when they want to put chemistry into your brain to act as, as um, medicines they need to open that blood-brain barrier up to let the thing get through. It's just too tight. And there was a, a guy that has something with ultrasound. He can do it with ultrasound, apparently. And it vibrates the thing open and lets the stuff through. I, I, I don't know if that's a good idea. Let me show you what nature's way is. I think I figured out how nature gets those enzymes past the blood-brain barrier. It's, it's actually very simple, elegant, and it's, it's actually absolute genius the way it's designed. It's just staggering. It just hit me today. I mean, I've been working on this for a long time, and you know, you run into these roadblocks, you say, how did that, how could that happen? Well, here's one solution, I think. All right, if, if the doctors know how this works, they make it so confusing you can't understand it. Lysosomes, yes do create the enzymes within the cells. But how, how do the enzymes get there in the first place? Enzymes are too big. Enzymes and other large molecules typically can't pass from the bloodstream to the central nervous system. Your brain doesn't want all these big things floating around out there. It's the blood-brain barrier is too restrictive. So how do the enzymes get up there? So they're coming up with the lysosomal enzyme exchanges. Well, yes, but how do the enzymes get up into those areas in the, in the brain? How do the enzyme get there if it can't pass the blood-brain barrier? All right, this is, it's, I think it's a really simple process. You see right in here, these are ribosomes. There's a little package of ribosomes in here. Those are all of the little chemistry sets that have are allowed into this cell. Lysosomes are used to break open these chemistry sets, to break open so that you can use them, and they turn into huge molecules. When they come in, they're little balls like this. They're called ribosomes. And I'll show you what happens when a ribosome unsheaths. All right, there's a couple things I want you to remember here. These are polypeptide chains. There's 20 different amino acids, and it can be programmed so elegantly, it's unbelievable. And these polypeptide chains come in here and program this ribosome. That's what I want you to see. That little ball has a bazillion of these little balls inside there, and they're in a chain. And when it unfurls, it opens up gigantic. Right now, it's tiny, absolutely tiny. So that's the thing I just showed you is the ribosome, right there, that ball. And they're just as tiny as tiny can be, but they are filled with those little polypeptide chains. All right, so there's a bazillion of these inside here, but they're so tiny, there's almost nothing there. However, once they get to where they see a chemical signature, those little balls, the triggers, they're floating around through your body. They're so small, they can go anywhere they want. That's this, that is just tiny as tiny can be. However, once they see a peptide chain that is a chemical signature, they pop open and the sheath falls off and they get huge. So here they are coming in, and all of a sudden they see a guy with this, he has got the chemistry, the peptide chain, as I'll show you in a second. And he says, whoa, they're not that guy. It opens up like that. And all of these little things have, well, I'll show you what it opens up and it looks like. But here is nothing but a ball. Here it's time it turns into a gigantic molecule. And this is what the enzyme looks like when it opens up. 
that can't get through the blood-brain barrier. So what's the beauty of this thing? It's unbelievably, beautifully, magnificently engineered. Those little ribosomes can float anywhere they want. They go anywhere they want. And the only time they get activated is when there's another s signal that says, okay, I want to use you, open up. And in your brain, it says, open up. Now, you have to have those ribosomes going in there, and the ribosomes only get created from bacteria. Here's, here's how it works. This is the bacteria. It's got its own program, which is DNA. Though that DNA says, I am going to make this ribosome, and that ribosome is going to be this big, long chain of polypeptides. And I'm going to put it in a ball. And I'm going to squirt it out into the, I, I think it basically goes into the lymph. So now it's floating around out there through the body. And it's going anywhere it wants. And cells like this, this is just an animal cell. Every cell has it. The ribosomes come right in here through the hole in there. And they, they hang around in here. And then the lysosome comes over and snips it open when it wants to use the ribosome. But there's, there's like 50 different enzymes in these cells, at least 50. And every one of them requires a different bacteria. So you have to have all these bacteria functioning perfectly or, or you're not gonna, gonna have the chemistry you need. You won't be able to make the trigger. You won't be able to open your enzyme. And if it's something related to your neurological, you know, your, something to do with your you know, communication to your muscular system or something, you, 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 you tremors and who knows what. And I mean, some of these kids have, I believe these are the issues that they're having. They're not, and, and, you know, it appears that once there's a, the gut gets straightened out pretty good, some of this stuff goes away or, or, or it helps. So, but, but um, that's all doctor stuff. That's nothing for me. All I know is that bacteria is is the programmers and the only way you can get up into your blood brain barrier is to have something small as that can get up there and then it opens up and then it does its chemistry otherwise you can't get the chemistry up there you're not going to get it wouldn't work it just wouldn't work down below the brain blood brain barrier you got bacteria running everywhere these things are going everywhere but they they don't go through the blood brain barrier it's too big the little balls no problem all right, just remember this. I showed you before the polypeptide chains. Beta cells are hormones, and they relate, re regulate blood glucose levels with insulin. So beta cells, are they release hormones. Well, is a hormone an enzyme? No, it's not. All right, hormones are not enzymes. Where do you see what they are? Enzymes are proteins, they're very, very complicated molecules, which I showed you, they're all over the place looking like that, that speed up chemical reactions in the body. Now, hormones are small molecules like peptides. Remember we talked about peptides? This is a peptide chain. That's a polypeptide chain. It sends signals to cells and tissues to trigger specific events. Remember that word trigger? Here's what happens. There it is right there. Those are the triggers which are the ribosomes and these are the polypeptide chains. So the hormone is just a little piece of this but it's a big enough piece that the ribosome recognizes it as the trigger and it triggers that ribosome to open up into the sheath. I mean, it takes the sheath off, and now you got the enzymes. So they're not going to open up just by accident, appears to me. There's two pieces. One of them is looking for something to, to attach to, and these things are the things that open up once they get whacked with, with the hormone. And they did find this. They found, well, I'll show it to you. Okay, this is UC Berkeley, and this is a Seeker channel, and the guy's name is Gokal, and he's going to be talking about the cellular matrix. Now, this is looking at all these cells at one time, and now he's going to home in on what it looks like inside of these individual cells. This is an unprecedented view of the cellular world. All right, you see all these little blue things? I believe those are the ribosomes 
which are going to turn into enzymes. And there's a bacteria in here gobbling them all up and carrying them out into the fluid-filled highway. Watch, and this is a lymph, I mean a, um, a white blood cell. Where we can actually see immune cells scooping up sugars in the ear of a zebra. All right, immune cells scooping up sugars. Well, sugars maybe, I think they're ribosomes. Fish in real time. Taking Focusing on. only on the crawling immune cells. We've noticed two classes of them. You see what he said? Two classes of them. One of them, they say, doesn't eat anything. It's just sniffing around. That's the polypeptide chain that's going out looking for somebody to alert the big guy to come and attack and unsheath. So here's what happens. He's going to say there's two classes. One team was not hungry at all, but it was very active in terms of trying to figure out, you know. You see what it is? It's just snaking around there. It's not, he says it's not hungry. It's not going to eat anything up. It's just snaking around until it finds something that it doesn't like. And it reports back to the big guy. The big guy comes out and goes, Pew! click, done, and it's dead what the environment is. There's another one that was kind of slouching around with a lot. He calls it lots of food in his belly. I say there are lots of ribosomes. And then they take them out and dump them into the lymph node in the blood system or take them to wherever they're needed. You might take them right down to the lymph nodes and say, I know you guys need this exact type of bacteria. There it is. All right, my claim is nothing in your body, zero happens if it has, doesn't have an enzyme. Enzymes make things happen millions of times a second, which it never would work in your body without the enzymes. So how do you get that enzyme up into the brain? The little ribosomes, remember, they squirt out of here. This is a single cell, tiniest little thing, these bacteria. And then that little tiny little pop comes out of there, which is the trigger. The trigger unsheaths. Once it gets past the brain barrier, and it only unsheaths if it sees a polypeptide chain that tells it to unsheath. And when it does, it blows up into a big killer molecule. And it sits right in every cell. Every cell is loaded with enzymes and ribosomes and lysosomes. And that's these shave off the ribosomes when they're needed to be used. But they're sitting around waiting to be used, it appears to me. And this is the whole process. Bacteria, which every enzyme requires a bacteria to make it. So the bacteria create a specialized enzyme, which is the ribosome, and it con contains all of those polypeptide chains, and it packages it up into that little ball, and then it programs the mRNA, and it gets right into our DNA. Every cloud-like thing is, a, is an enzyme. That's an enzyme, which is very, very fast molecular activity, th thousands, millions, billions, even trillions of times faster than would happen. It would take years to do the chemistry that happens in a quarter of a second. Just look it up, enzymes and catalysts, very, very, very active. Without them, you're done. And if you don't have the bacteria, you don't have the, the ribosome. You don't have the ribosomes, you don't get the enzyme. You don't get the enzymes, you don't get the end product. Simple as that. So if you need some kind of insulation that one of these enzymes is going to produce up in your brain and it never gets there, well, you don't have the insulation. Just like what happened in your house. You see that? That's the brain fibers. And they're all, they, every one of those has to be separated in an insulated tubing around it. And, it, and, and, and they all are. Now, if you don't have the correct insulation, you're going to be short out. You're going to have all kinds of problems. And that's basically, I believe, is the issue with a lot of neurological conditions. I'll leave it at that. You make your own decision. But if these are not insulated well, they're not going to function correctly. And in addition to that, there's, there's conduction here, too which is a whole other set of chemistry. This is, this is nothing but chemistry here. And it's extremely, extremely elegant chemistry. All dependent upon bacteria to create enzymes. The enzymes do the chemistry. All right, this is very simple. The blood-brain barrier is a semi-permeable membrane of cells that lines the blood vessels of the brain and spinal cord. 
protecting the brain by keeping out harmful substances, only allowing little tiny things in. It allows nutrients and small molecules to pass through, but not enzymes. The blood-brain barrier structure and permeability are mysteries that scientists are still trying to understand. They have no idea how it works. You know, they know it's there, and they're talking about genes and all this stuff, nearby cells, mysteries, largely remains a mystery. Well, I think I, I know exactly how it works. It allows the chemistry in, but only the chemistry that's created by your body. Secretomics uncovers blood-brain barrier mystery. Let's see what they have to say. All right, one time, wrap it up. Ribosomes, so tiny they can go anywhere. They come out of the bacteria, and they are polypeptide chains that are wrapped up tight in a ball, and then they furl open like this when they become enzymes. And this is an enzyme, and that's an enzyme. So you need these real big molecules to do these jobs. And they don't go into your brain. The only way they can go into your brain, because they're just too big once they're open, the only way they can go into your brain is when they're in the trigger phase. Then they unsheath and all of that stuff happens in your brain. Otherwise, it just wouldn't happen. And it's the most elegant process I could imagine. The only things that are going to get through there are, are, are the ribosomes. And the ribosomes are triggered by some kind of chemistry in your body that says, hey, go do this or go do that. And that's those little polypeptide chains. Very interesting, very, you know, it's all magnetic because those amino acids all have huge molecular signatures, huge dipole moments. You see all those little spots, those blue and red, all those, these are all dipole moments that are polar little places. And if this thing isn't exactly identical to that every time, it doesn't work. And can you imagine programming that? I can't. Anyway, I love you all. That's, that's my take on a blood-brain barrier.